Hi, I'm Azra Wadi, and this is my project, Global Weather Project over Smog in Beijing, the Air Quality. To start for smog in Beijing and the air quality, I would like to start my global weather project going off with what is smog. To start, the word smog um, is a fusion of the word smoke and fog, so smog is what we get out of that. Smog is the haze that results when sunlight reacts with nitrogen oxides and volatile organic compounds. These volatile organic compounds are emitted from the burning fossil fuels in cars, power plants, and factories. Next, I would like to go over who deals with smog. And I do have a photo here. It's Beijing before smog, Beijing after smog. I know the quality is kind of bad, but you can still tell that this is gray and there's a little color over here. Um, Beijing is not the only city that is suffering from smog. Um, actually, um, other countries that are suffering from smog can go all the way from Asia to the Middle East and even America. Um, that's everybody that could deal with smog. And um, I have a top 10 of a rating of the 10 places that do deal with smog, Beijing, China being number one. Um, Ajwa's Iran being number two. Number three is Ulan Bator, Mongolia. Number four, Lahore, Pakistan. Number five, New Delhi, India. Number six, Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Number seven, Cairo, Egypt. Number eight, Dhaka, Bangladesh. Number nine, Moscow, Russia. And number 10, Mexico City, Mexico. And those are the top 10 that actually deal with smog. Um, I didn't put any from America on there. I don't know why, but this was the top 10 that they actually had on the site. And I just wanted it to be more factual by having a real top 10 list. Next, I would like to move on um, to what causes smog. Um, in this instance for Beijing, it would be photochemical smog. And photochemical smog happens once the chemical element nitrogen oxide and what we talked about earlier, the volatile organic compounds, um, they react along with the presence of sunlight as a catalyst and form smog at lower levels. Um, what smog does. Um, as for Beijing, these were just some three or four key points that um, affect Beijing. And um, smog has been connected as a reason for shorter lifespans of Beijing citizens. And that, that's shocking to know that um, it's been connected to these shorter lifespans and there's really nothing much that they can really do about the smog, you know? And the Chinese Academy of environmental planning number two determined that in 2003 the air pollution was responsible for 411,000 premature deaths across China. Say that one more time, 411,000 premature deaths across China. Um, emergency me measures that have been enacted are factory closures and bans on motor vehicles entering the city on days of high air pollution. So for the key point on the top, factory closures. That's factories being closed, jobs that you know aren't available anymore to these citizens because they're having to close them because they're kind of a reason for the smog. As well as bans on motor vehicles entering the city on high air pollution days. Um, just imagine if you couldn't drive to the city in your motorized vehicle that you paid for because there was high air pollution. So if you think about it, we have it really good here in the state. Um, threatens to limit the future success and expansion of the city. Um, that's something that I had to put on there. I know it's at the bottom, but I just thought that was kind of, you know, a big deal. We think about small towns not growing, but think about Beijing, China not growing because of the small. Like that's an environmental issue that's causing um, their city not to expand successfully. Um, this is about the smog in Beijing, 
And smog in Beijing, um, I did put down three of the reasons why um, and how it is affected, but I would like to go over this chart. Um, this is a Beijing air quality chart, and I just cut it off of the internet. Um, and I do have my source. My source was the South China Morning Post, and they posted this graphic, um, and it was an update on Wednesday at 8 o'clock, one day in Beijing, where the moderate level of the smog was in 60 million. And if you can see on here, on that Wednesday, that, that red bar would show that 60 million. Now, as for going over the, um, the causes for the air pollution, um, surge in numbers of motorized vehicles. So they, I read on here um, in another article that there was a lot of jobs that, uh, well, not really a lot of jobs, but the people that had jobs obviously somehow got a motorized vehicle, scooters, things like that. Um, and that is one reason why there's a lot more smog is because there's more vehicles being used in the output from manufacturing, which China being a big manufacturer for a lot of things, um, the output for manufacturing has caused some of the smog due to um, the factories building the things that they build. Um, and then natural resources, as for natural resources, cities surrounding topography, um, the topography around Beijing is basically surrounded by mountains. And because it is surrounded by mountains, therefore the pollution remains trapped within these city limits. And that's the reason why it's just so confound whenever you think of um, Beijing or that photo that I showed earlier. It's just because of the fact that they're in the topography of where there's a lot of mountains and it traps it within the city. As well as seasonal weather. Seasonal weather is a natural reason um, just for many causes. And then factories, the coal burning factories, the reason I wanted to put that with us being in the state of Kentucky, I know that coal is a big factor here. And the coal burning factories is one of the reasons for the smoke there in Beijing, China as well. Moving on next to the facts, I put facts that will make your skin crawl. The reason I really had to put that was because over one third of the vicious species in China um, which is the yellow in the Yellow River have been wiped out. So in the Yellow River, over one third of their fish species have been wiped out. If you think of it, Chinese anywhere, fish is going to be a food that is going to be, you know, popular. And just to know that some of their fish has been wiped out because of the smog, you know, that sounds like a big issue to me. As well as um, over half of China's groundwater has been deemed unsafe. So a lot of people make jokes and things about Mexico's water, but really we should be concerned about the water. This is what these people drink and cook with, and their groundwater has been deemed unsafe. As well as my third point, the um, airborne toxins that kill an alarming number of people. So that's something to think about, airborne toxins killing a number of young people. We talked about earlier that there was 411,000 premature deaths, or actually we'll talk about that. Um, and that's just crazy to think that the airborne toxins kill an alarming number of people. Airborne particle pollution is giving a rise to unique health complaints. So that's unique health complaints, which means they could be health complaints that we've never heard of before or different causes that have been mixed together, stomach aches, headaches, worse than that, um, have been on a rise, as well as China's air pollution is visible from outer space. The reason I had to put that down just imagine the air pollution is visible from outer space. That's bad. Even if it's visible from when they have to walk with the masks on, that just show, comes to show that it needs to be fixed. And then I know, you know, if they could have a way, hopefully they would try to fix it. Um, this slide is going to be on the efforts to fix this issue. Um, I came up with... Um, countries that have tried to fix the issues and things they've put together, as well as community efforts. Um, as far as um, countries, it says many countries, including the United States, have created laws to reduce smog. So the laws that have been reduced to reduce smog, some laws include restrictions on what chemicals the factory can release and into the atmosphere or when they can release them. So that means they even have a special time. So probably during times of high air pollution, they're not going to want, you know, some of these chemicals to be released from the factories. This is going to make it a lot worse. I wish in a way there was a way we could find another way to 
get rid of, you know, what has to come out of these factories, not the manufacturing itself, but the chemicals. Um, community effort. Some of the community efforts, I just put one down, um, burn days. That's when residents can burn waste, such as leaves in their yard. Um, I know here living in Kentucky, if you live out of city limits, they'll let you burn your leaves or your trash. And then these limits on chemicals released into the air reduce the amount of smog. So they're trying their best to reduce the amount of smog with that. Next, we're going to go over the projects and organizations. Um, it does say on top groups against smog and pollution. I'm sorry it cut it off. The screen's just a little small. But I really chose them because I liked their logo. I know that sounds silly, but I want, it made me want to look into it more with it being so colorful. And um, really that's a hidden message with it being so colorful and the cloud and the fish. Clean water, clean air, clean, you know, all of it. Um, and then nature with having the three leaf clover. But gas, as for short, was founded in 1969 by a group of volunteers with a concern about air quality. And having, um, working for a healthier, sustainable environment was their goal. Um, and I, like I said, once again, their logo really is what brought me to this. And I know I, when I did some research, there was more groups. But um, one of the projects and organizations else that I looked up um, that I seen was Greenpeace. Greenpeace is um, an independent, nonprofit, global campaigning organization. And what Greenpeace does is they use nonviolent, creative confrontation to expose global environmental problems and their causes. So, without being confrontational in a rude way, they just try to educate others. I did see on there where they would help you um, understand what they're trying, what their organization does. And um, with it being nonprofit, I mean. Really don't get much out of it, but at least they're, you know, kind of the backbone of trying to support the environment. And we all should be a part of that spine. Furthermore, I'd like to go over what you can do, what I can do, what anybody can really do. Um, it's just going to be five simple things um, that I can go over that will help day by day environmental issues like air pollution, smog, ozone. Um, smog is still a problem in many places. Everyone can do their part to reduce smog by changing a few behaviors. And these behaviors are behaviors such as drive less. So with driving less, I just mean like walk, carpool, maybe take a bike. You know, it's getting warm, so maybe even riding a bike. Um, that will reduce air pollution and just try to do that whenever possible. Um, taking care of your cars. This one I didn't really think of. Taking care of your cars. Um, getting a tune-up, a regular tune-up, um, changing your oil on schedule, as well as inflating your tires to the proper level can improve the mileage and reduce emissions. So even something that you have to already hopefully do can help reduce, well obviously reduce emissions, but can help with air pollution. Um, my third point was fill up during the cooler hours of the day. Now this one I did not know until I did research, and um, it's, it does say, I looked it up twice, it said to fuel up during the cooler hours of the day, like the night or the early morning, um, prevents gas fumes from heating up and producing ozone. So ozone, air pollution, small, different cases, the same thing. Um, as well as number four, avoid products that release high levels of VOCs. Um, for example, you could use a low VOC paint. You could find that um, at different hardware stores, paint stores. As well as my fifth um, thing that we could do all to help the environment would be avoid gas-powered yard equipment. Um, you could use ones that actually make ones that charge now. And there's even some handheld things, but I know nowadays we try to ease for what we don't have to do the most effort into. But um, even for my stepdad, he went to Lowe's not too long ago before when something was on sale, and it was a chargeable lawnmower, and even that can help the environment. So it's really nice to know that even my stepdad even thought about that. As for my last slide, I would just like to say a summary over um, the smog in Beijing, and I really did like this project. I'm not the best at video, but I feel like this is going to improve me for later on in life. And I would just like to say, um, as for the summary, 
While many of us outside of Beijing, China, and other countries, as myself, um, affected, not as myself, sorry, but the U.S. is affected by smog in a way. Affected by smog, air pollution, live blissfully unaware of these problems, Chinese and other citizens of, their, of other countries, unfortunately, live day by day affected by these issues. And um, that really did hit me hard. There's a lot of issues, you know, that go on in the world. Starvation, hunger, lots of, same thing, I guess, but lots of things. But this one really hit me with it being due to weather. We're so lucky with the air that we have here in Kentucky. Might not be the cleanest. I don't know much about it, but I'm breathing. I'm happy. Um, and I would just like to leave this um, PowerPoint with a quote from John James Audubon, and it basically says, a true conversationist is a man who knows that the word is not, I said the word, I'm so sorry. A true conversationist is a man who knows that the world is not given by his fathers, but borrowed from his children. And that was by James John, John James Audubon. And the last thing I would just like to say before I mess anything else up with my words, would be keep our clean and please keep in mind what you can do. And to finish this off, I do have work cited and um, I try to set all my sources at the bottom so you would know what goes with what because I know that kind of gets confusing with graphics. So thank you. I hope you liked my project. I'm sorry about the picture quality. I'm going to try to link um, my PowerPoint into my homework so that you can have it so you can look over it and read over it um, make sure that I did everything right and thank you